Brad and I finding each other and, you know, deciding to marry each other and, you know, starting a new life together um, and the people we are today, we didn't, I didn't, you know, wake up and and become this person out of nowhere. It's, it's truly because of all of the positive influences around me and the people who have been around me. My best friends are my family. They're just tremendous people and they, uh, they're so much a part of who I am. Yeah, when I was only 17 I could hear the angels whispering So I drove into the woods and wandered aimlessly about For summers we would spend in Ireland and we'd go down to the beach and we'd play on the dunes and we'd make sand castles. Well, there's one day that I was making a sand castle and I was taking it very seriously. So I needed water to you know, carve and craft the castle. So I sent Jonathan on a mission uh, to get a bucket of water for me, and I didn't realize the tide was out. So Jonathan, like, he's probably six at the time, and he is walking a mile out <laughs> to get a bucket of water. Meanwhile, there's probably about 10 of us. We all pack up and get in the cars, two different cars to drive back to my Auntie Joan's house. Well, one car thought Jonathan was in one car, and the other car thought that Jonathan was in the other car. We get back to my Auntie Joan's house, and Jonathan is nowhere to be found. My mother goes crazy. I don't even know what's going on. So they pile in a car, go da back down to the beach, and there's Jonathan on the handlebars of this old man's bike being wheeled back up to my Auntie Joan's house. But to this day, Jonathan will remind me that I left him on the beach. But I think I've become a better sister in my <laughs> old age. My brother and I always got along, but we got in two fist fights. You know, that first fight playing pickup basketball in our driveway. Yeah, the other one was uh, was over his high school girlfriend. Um, I, I believe I cursed at her on the phone and hung up on her, and he, <laughs> he found out about it. And suffice to say, I lost that one as well, badly. But those are the only two fights we've ever had. Would, I know better now. What'd you call his girlfriend? Uh, <laughs> Come on. Barfina. <laughs> his high school girlfriend, yeah. Barfina. In, in life, there are peaks and there are valleys, and you know, at, at my absolute lowest point in my life, uh, my, my brother just showed up. He was just there. He didn't ask if he could come. He didn't, you know, he didn't request. He didn't call ahead. He just, he just showed up because he knew I needed him, and um, it was a tremendous thing. The book of love is long and boring. I was eight when Janelle was born, so at first Janelle was like my little doll, and I dressed her up and, you know, thought she was born to be my little plaything. Um, but she's such a generous spirit. She's like my mom in a lot of ways. Like, you know, I, I definitely value the relationship that we've built now that we're older. And she's come to visit me, I think, in every place I've ever lived. She and Kim, my matron of honor, through the best bachelorette I think anyone's ever had. and. She did it without any request or anything. She and Kim just went above and beyond. And that's Janelle. She just will go above and beyond. And you, she, you don't even have to ask her. She just does. Deep down, my dad is like a big kid. He was the guy who went to Disneyland and rode the Peter Pan ride as an adult seven times in a row. And it's, you know, it's very true. There's like a sense of whimsy in, about my dad. He started songwriting or he learned how to scuba dive. He would run a marathon. He never gave up on trying new things and that's something that we push each other now to do today. Your dad turned me into a scotch drinker. Um, totally. My liver thanks him. Um, you know, I just, I love the talks that your dad and I have when we're in Fort Worth and we steal that moment away to go outside and I'll bring the cigars and he'll bring the scotch and um, you know, we'll try to avoid politics. But other than that, we're cool. My dad very much taught me that your word is your honor. And that's something that I love in Brad and the fact that he brings that integrity um, to this relationship. And that's something that uh, I think that's a reason I'm with you. <laughs> me and my... Well, my dad really is my best friend. The two things he told me on the day when he dropped me off at UT were, you know, if somebody offers you a mint or gum, 
take it because it means they're either being nice or you've got bad breath. And then his parting words to me before my parents drove off back to Houston were, keep your pecker in your pants. He shows up here unannounced sometimes on business trips and- Every week. Yeah, I was like- <laughs> <laughs> Like last night. Oh, we see him a lot. <laughs> I don't know a better man uh, than my dad. I really don't. I hope that I can be half the husband to you that my dad is to my mom. I hope that I can be half the father he was to me. My mom has always been my biggest advocate. She's always been protective of me when it comes to the, the women in my life. <laughs> no one's ever really been good enough. Which is true. Hey. I'm kidding. <laughs> she believed in me even when I didn't sometimes. I had a hard time with big brother syndrome. My brother was good at everything he did, and I felt like a long time like I would live in a shadow, but my mom would never let me. You know, she was, it was so easy for her to see the gifts that I had that were unique and different, and that's where, you know, she guided me and, and reinforced me and helped me, and she really helped me understand the individual that I was and not the little brother that I was. Um, and that was a really cool thing. And you know, it was, that was really, I mean, that was all my mom. I don't think that your mom was totally sold on, uh, on me at the time when I showed up at your brother's wedding. And I believe I was standing about five feet from her when she told your, your cousins that she prayed every day that Jennifer would find herself a good man. <laughs> Clearly meaning that I was not that man. <laughs> My mom, you know, obviously being from Ireland, she, there's still things, even though she's been in this country over 30 years, that she's still learning, like saying, oh, look, it's the up store when it's the UPS store, <laughs> or, <laughs> oh, what's La Fitness when it's LA Fitness, <laughs> stuff like that. My mother was notorious for her parties, notorious for being such a wonderful hostess, and she's just one of the most loving, generous wonderful people. It goes back to my granny, um, who died when I was one, but she was known as just the most amazing woman. She was a very proud woman and very, like she had nothing, like she was a widow, but she very much held her head high and was so classy. She refused to tell her age. Uh, she would get on buses and, and she was a senior citizen, but she wouldn't take the discount because she was too proud. And taught all of her girls to be proud and to, to never feel like they were less than, they were more than, even if they didn't have you know, the best clothes or whatever, she always taught them to you know, be classy. And I think that that's something I will definitely um, teach my children and that I feel like you know, I bring to this relationship. It's it's not about um, what you have, or it's about you know who you are and the class that you bring. And um, I think that she would be proud looking down, and hopefully, we all carry on a little bit of that. And all of the signs got blown away. Sometimes you wonder if you're walking in the wrong. If you break down, I'll drive out and find you. If you forget my love, I try to remind you and stay by you when it don't come easy. When it don't come. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and making the effort, the tremendous effort to be here. It's really not a celebration of just Brad and I getting married today. I really want there to be a feeling that this is a celebration of all of us and collectively um, all of us being together and having known each other for so many years and my family in from Ireland and my family in from Texas and Brad's family in from Oklahoma and Texas and our immediate families. It's just a big... Thank you. Someone will say what's been said before. It's only love you're looking for. 
from Oklahoma and Texas and our immediate families, it's just a big thank you. And, um, and we love you. You're all over the place with that. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> if I'm lucky. <laughs> We're really just so blessed to have everybody make the effort to come. And, and we really do uh, feel so loved. Um, you know, just special, good. Wow, that was really profound. Yeah, was that good? Was that profound? <laughs> did you like that? Special, good. <laughs> I think I said it a lot better than you did. But <laughs> whatever. Special. Oh, I'm... Hi, I'm Brad. I totally set myself up for that. <laughs>